course of the joint committee's inquiry, we took evidence from a number of organisations about those issues, and uh, almost universally, not, not entirely, but almost universally, across all of the uh, interests, including the EHRC and others, there was a view that with the appropriate safeguards and checks in place, uh, it was an appropriate and proportionate thing to ensure that there were powers of entry in circumstances where someone is being coerced uh, and effectively imprisoned uh, and unable to be properly assessed with a view to identifying whether they are at risk or indeed experiencing abuse and neglect. And the consultation that took place, we didn't get to see the results of the consultation until after the committee had reported. My committee report concluded that there should be such a power. Um, the government, having analysed the 200 plus responses of which 88 were individuals, concluded that the 68 individuals who had said no, there should not be such a power, should completely invalidate the opinions of everyone else. Uh, and all of the organisations, uh, many of which were safeguarding boards, professional groups and so on, should not be given uh, even equal weight, but actually should be given a lesser weight to, uh, to, to, to those that had written in. And the argument, I guess, was that because this was not, not a big, high-profile consultation, though a few people knew about it, because though a few people knew about it, those that bothered must have really cared about it, and because they cared about it, we should give more weight to their opinion. This is a rather extraordinary contortion to go through to justify uh, a decision that seems to be nothing to do with